you know, maybe you've read a few articles on this over the last week or so. I know I've seen this a lot, but it's, uh, it's called a Christmas star event. It is scheduled in a little less than two weeks. It seems that Jupiter and Saturn will possibly align the closest that they've been in nearly 800 years. This is an extremely rare event and it's really cool. I spoke with Elon University astrophysics professor, Professor Tony Kreider about this celestial event. Dr. Kreider, this is really cool. I mean, you know, I'm a big science geek, so I love this stuff, but tell us what will happen on December 21st. What should we look for? So if you go outside and, and look uh, into the Southwest, you're gonna see over the course of the next few weeks, Jupiter and Saturn getting closer and closer together in the sky. Jupiter should be the, what appears to be the brightest star you see, and Saturn the second brightest star, but unlike uh, stars, these planets don't twinkle. They're bright, steady light. And so you should see them getting closer and closer together all the way up until December 21st. And then on the 21st, there will they appear as one and be a super bright object in the sky, or what will it look like? If you have sharp vision, you'll be able to see that, that they're um, separated slightly. Or if you're looking through a telescope or binoculars, you'd see them separated. But you would be able to see Jupiter and Saturn uh, within a, you know, the telescope eyepiece. You wouldn't need to have, point to one and then point to the other. They should be very, very close together. But uh, for them to be as close as they're going to be uh, this year, it hasn't happened uh, for almost 800 years. We're literally talking about when Genghis Khan was alive is the last time this happened. Yeah. I, I've certainly never seen, seen them this close before. And I've spent in my entire professional life uh, having students look at Jupiter through the telescope and then I'll adjust the telescope and maybe they'll look at Saturn, but this will be the first time I'll ever be able to look through the telescope and see them, both Jupiter and Saturn. So people are calling this a Christmas star and they're comparing it to the star of Bethlehem and what happened when Jesus was born. Uh, explain that correlation. Uh, that uh, while some scholars think that it was just a metaphor, uh, others suggest that perhaps it was uh, a, an alignment of Jupiter and Saturn, uh, uh, a, a triple conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, where they went back and forth across uh, each other's paths several times uh, around that time period. That's interesting. Well, we'll all be watching and thank you for your expertise. We appreciate it. So it was fascinating and me being such a science geek, I ended up talking with Dr. Kreider for about an hour after <laughs> the interview was over with. Uh, pretty neat stuff. You'll be able to look um, to the Southwest to see this. Um, they're, they're calling it the Christmas star event because even he said that astronomers have gone back, you know, and looked at that time period within, you know, five to ten years on either side of year, year one, basically, to see if it was like the Christmas star in Bethlehem. And he said there, there was a triple conjunction that happened back then, mm. which I think he said was Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, which made it even brighter. But some scientists think that it was also a supernova. So it's really interesting stuff. Yeah, and as you go through the years, you know, technology gets so advanced. I, I wonder what the story will be, you know, 100 years from now, some strange things that are happening and what that conversation will be like, too. Um, I do find it fascinating, fascinating that maybe what happened uh, 800 years ago is what's going to happen in a few weeks. Yes, and I think it's so appropriate that it's happening right around Christmas as well, Chilton. Now we just have to cross our fingers that the skies are clear on December 21st so we can see what's yes. going on in the stars. Yeah, it's a shame he's not so he's not smart. You know, I was joking with him. I said, I feel like a mental midget standing next to you. <laughs> this guy's brilliant. I took <laughs> astronomy in college. It was not my best subject. <laughs> we'll leave it at that.